First, I would like to thank the conference organizers for inviting me to give this talk. The title of the talk is Electron Phonon Coupling in Semiconductor Nanostructures, Intrinsic and Extrinsic Tunability Demonstrated with Zinc Terabyte Nanowires. I'm Yong Zhang from the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Here is the outline of my talk. First, I'm going to give a brief introduction to the electron phonon coupling. Then the framework to treat electron phonon coupling, there are two distinctly different approaches. Then how we probe electron phonon coupling using resonant normal scaffoldings. Again, there are two theories uh, to, to explain the result. And then I will show the experimental data from using resonant Raman scattering to study bulk and nanostructures. structures, then the conclusions. And for 30 years, people have been asking this question, is electron phonon coupling weakened in semiconductor nanostructures? There is a considerable amount of controversy. And why this is important? Of course, this is fundamentally important science issues but also there are a number of practical uh, implications. And in the early days, people have suggested there's something called formal bottleneck effect when you go in from a bulk to a nano structures. So this formal bottleneck effect is related to electron formal coupling and they are important for a number of things, hot carrier devices, multi-esthetic general ratios. So how we, deal with electron phonon coupling in a semiconductor. If we don't consider electron phonon couplings, we can simply write the wave function for the total system as a product of the electronic part and the phonon part. And they, are, they can be independently solved from two Schrodinger equations. Now with coupling and this electron phonon coupling terms, and these two equations become coupled, then the wave function of electronic part actually depends on the, on the uh, atomic uh, position. So obviously it's, it's going to be very difficult to solve them exactly. So people have taken two general approaches. In one case, we only consider the electron phonon coupling in the electronic states, but not in the formal states. So in this case, in the perturbation, the first order perturbation will be zero for the bulk uh, states. Then all the effects comes from second order or higher order uh, perturbation. Most better, uh, most known effect is so-called indirect band gap transition and something like this. So this is a result of second order perturbation and higher order perturbations you can get Raman scattering and also uh, large polyloid effect. And the other extreme to deal with the coupling is to consider only the electron phonon coupling in the formal states. If we take a linear coupling approximation, then we calculated this matrix element. So I already mentioned for the box states, this is going to be zero. However, if these electronic states are localized, then, then they can be non-zero. And because of this, the, the atomic configurations will be different between say initial state and final states. Then they are formal states are not orthogonal to each other. So this effect cause a shift in the electronic state and also the electron phonon coupling strengths can be measured by so-called Huang race factor, which can be calculated from this matrix element. Now, how do we probe electron phonon coupling in semiconductor nanostructures? And they cannot be measured directly, so we use different uh, optical techniques. Most widely used techniques is resonant Raman scattering. So this is one example when you do resonant normal scattering, say on zinc terabyte, and you will see many phonon replicas. But interestingly, you see the first order one is almost zero. And now for 
many learning structures and people have done similar measuring. The questions are, are the results really genuine size dependent effect? Or could be due to something else, like for instance, the defects included in the growth during the growth. And also perhaps you just use too much lasers that induce defects. Then which electron for no coupling mechanism is appropriate? One theory is to use lattice relaxation, and this is most widely used in the nano community. In this theory, a reduced R to one ratio, meaning the ratio between the one, the two phonon and one phonon, imply a weakened electron phonon coupling. And the other theory using as tonic states as intermediate state for the normal scaffolding. And uh, for this theory has mostly ignored uh, in the community. However, this theory will imply that it, the reduced R to one ratios, I meaning the inheritance of the first order Lama scattering actually uh, is in, enhanced in the transformer coupling. So specifically, these are the two theories. And one is based on formal intermediate states, and that was uh, developed by Abrecht in 1961 and used this formula to calculate the Raman scattering uh, cross section. And these are the matrix elements, which is supposed to be non zero due to the, the lattice relaxation. And the second one is based on asthonic immediate, uh, immediate states. And again, this is a very complicated theory. And none of these uh, approach can be easily uh, calculated. However, I can say there are some major issues with the uh, theory involving the formal intermediate states. One is for the bulk state, there will be no lattice relaxation because this matrix element will be zero. So obviously the uh, that theory does not apply to the bulk. Also, this theory cannot explain the forbidden one LO transition and also those ratios between different orders. And if resonant normal scattering has already been observed in the bulk crystal, then the, the following based mechanisms, even if it's applicable, it might not be adequate for the nano structures. So specifically how people do uh, use the theory for the nano structure. And first we have to assume this these matrix elements are non-zero. If they are non-zero, you can calculate the R to one, the ratio between second order and first order will be non-zero. Then you can derive, from well, now you can get a form from this factor. However, it's inconvenient to use uh, experimental data as a bulk reference because for the bulk spectrum, this ratio actually is infinity. That would imply the fact you have infinity size boundary factor. So instead, people are actually using a different theory to calculate the reference value. And this was a theory developed for something else but has been widely used uh, for this community, which can calculate a boundary factor, for instance, for most uh, two six semiconductors in the order of two or three. As I said, this has been a 30 years uh, process. And one of the most earliest uh, work was reported in 1989, where uh, it was shown this one LO intensity is much enhanced compared to the bulk structure uh, in this uh, quantum bar. So the conclusion is the electron phonon coupling has been weakened in nano structures, in this case, quantum dots. However, over the years, many people have reported many conflicting results, either reduce or increase, or sometimes there's no change. If, to say if there's a change or not, we first need to have a, a reliable bulk values. 
So according to this early work at one temperature, then basically this R to one ratio is infinity. Now for room temperature, we actually measure many bulk materials. What we found for high quality bulk materials, the ratio is still very big in order eight to 10. So as we show here for many bulk zinc terabyte samples, if we measure a set of thin film samples, even they are somewhat defective and you can still get fairly large values. However, if you put lots of defects to the bulk material, you can see this value is going to reduce. And if for highly defective thin film, it can go even below one. So this tells us even just a defect, you can get a very large range of tuning. And if you use a black theory, you will imply you have a very large electron form coupling uh, in the bulk materials. Now, here's the spe uh, spectrum for the uh, defective samples and compared to a non-defective or uh, very high quality zinc terabyte. And now let's look at the data for zinc terabyte and wires. And there has been some reports in the zinc terabyte and wires, and particularly uh, uh, this one, it shows very nice dependence of R to one ratio as a function of nanowire size and with a uh, reference value calculated using that theory I mentioned. And that looks very nice because what people want to see, the electron funnel coupling reduce with reducing size. And we have studied a large number of nanowires with size down to about 30 nanometer up to even close to one micrometer, what we find is there is very little change for the electron funnel coupling or the R to one ratio. So here is the block. And here is a 84 nanometer uh, nanowires. So the change is very small in terms of ratio. Now, if we put all the data together, and first, if we use a reliable bulk value, it's much greater than what has been reported. Now, adding all the uh, measured values from our nanowires, you see, even with some fluctuations in general, these values are much greater than what have previously reported. Also, there's very little change from uh, almost microscopic size to uh, nano scale size. So we know the impurity and defects can induce change. And there's another way to induce change, which is to use a laser. And here is the very large nanowires. If we use different lasers, we can see with a higher laser power, you start to see a somewhat enhanced one LO. Also, you start to see a defective peak related to tellurium. And for a smaller nanowire, so you can see a more drastic effect uh, change due to the laser illumination uh, because that induces defects. But with, with this observation, we actually can have a way to control these ratios. And here it shows in different samples, either uh, high quality bulk materials or thin film, and you can illuminate it with lasers or just by introducing uh, defects, you can get almost uh, any values you want with some uh, accuracy. And here's a conclusion of my talk. The first is, I want to say the resin rama scattering cannot be used to extract one race factor. And there's no lattice reduction in the bulk material and there's minimum even in a moderately sized nano structure, let's say for the nano wire case, maybe down to 30 nanometer. And re the reduction in this 2LO to 1LO ratio implies increase rather than decrease in electron hormone coupling. And we have a very large intrinsic 2LO to 1LO ratio and no significant change uh, down to 30 nanometer. However, extrinsic effect can greatly modify the NLO ratios. They can be either due to impurity or defects incorporated during the growth or laser-induced defects uh, during the measurement. 
So because of this result on the gene kernel nanowires, uh, we believe many other nanostructures should be re-examined carefully, and we need to develop a proper theory for this. And there are some practical applications, and it can be used for some memory devices, and we can actually have program programmable nanoscale barcodes. And finally, I would like to acknowledge the supports and collaborators. Thank you for your attention.